Good morning, uh, Saints. Again, I want to take this time to welcome you uh, in our Sunday morning worship. To those who are listening, join with us uh, today. God bless you. Praise God. Thank you uh, for your commitment uh, and your <coughs> faithfulness uh, today. Praise God. We want to go to the Word of God. Deuteronomy uh, 23, verse 5. 23, uh, verse 5. Deuteronomy 23, verse 5. Our God is a God of blessings. Remember that. Our God is a God of blessings. He is well able to take the curse and turn it around into blessings. Praise God. And that's what he gave to the people of God, uh, the Israelites. And I believe the same uh, principle applies uh, to every child of God. Let us read uh, Deuteronomy 23, 5. But the Lord your God turned, turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you. Remember, remember that. But the Lord your God turned the curse into blessing for you because the Lord your God loves you. What a statement. What, a, what a encouraging to hear that you and I don't have to live under the curse. When you and I give our life to Jesus, when you and I support the kingdom of God, God is well able to turn the curse into the blessing. Praise God. Because He loves you and I. Hallelujah. Let us continue to support her. Let us continue to spread the news that there is a God who can turn the curse into the blessing. Praise God. God bless you. Praise God as we come, as we support the kingdom here in Akasi, the churches, our local church here in Akasi. God bless you for your giving and your liberality. Let us pray. Father, we are so thankful for today. God, we are so thankful that uh, you are able to turn the curse into the blessing. Father, I pray for the dimension of the blessing of God. Uh, Lord, will overflow into our life uh, as we support uh, God, the work of the kingdom. We invite the supernatural God uh, of heaven. Uh, Lord, we will open the heavens for your blessing, your provisions. Uh, God, your healing and your miracles, oh God upon the saints. Lord, we make sure we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. God bless you today. Hallelujah. We want to go straight into the Word of God, Mark chapter 5, 1 to 20. The Gospel of Mark chapter 5, 1 to 20. Hallelujah. Mark 5, 1 to 20. Many of you, many of uh, us, <coughs> the reality we want great things to happen into our life. I don't know about you as I look back at my life, no one has ever told me that great things can happen to my life, never once. All I could hear the voices of, uh, of the voice of condemnation and the voice of worthlessness and my future is amount to nothing. Deep down in my soul, I may long for greatness, but the question remains if that would be real for my life. <clears throat> the voices of condemnation, worthlessness. I was filled with insecurity, emptiness, and hopelessness 
praying louder than anything else in life, it's like you are covered with a, a black blanket and there is no way out. My dear friends, no matter how low or how messed up you are in life, our God is a, is a great God and He does great things to those who would run to Him and worship. Remember that. Our God is a great God and He does great things to those who would run to Him and worship. The truth that has been the case throughout the centuries till to this very moment. In our text, a story of a man, he was in a lowest of all the lowest. The Bible says no one could tame this man. This same man living himself, visit day and night in tombs and on mountains, cutting himself, himself with stones, <coughs> meaning the whole world has no answer for such a man. Think about that. The Bible says no one could bind him, not even with chains. He was even uh, at war with himself. Even the lowest of the lowest of life, and listen to this, God said to him, I have compassion on you because I love you and I have great things for your life. Think about this. I have compassion for you. I love you. And I have great things for your life. <clears throat> and from that moment to this man, life was never be the same again. Because our God has great plan, great future, great things for this man in the tomb and even for your life, great things, supreme things, priceless things God has for your life. Think about that. So this morning, I want to minister the message I have entitled, God has great things for you. Mark 5, 1 to 20. And they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of uh, the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately <coughs> there made him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, where is dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with the chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken into in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have to do, I uh, to do with you? Jesus, Son of the Most High, I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine, and uh, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out, entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down this steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. <coughs> so 
So those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that had happened. And they came to Jesus, and so the one who had demon possessed had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him, or Jesus, to depart from the region. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he had uh, he has had compassion on you and he departed and began to proclaim Decapolis uh, all that Jesus had done and all marveled. Praise God. The great things. Firstly, I want to consider with you the state of this man. In our text, Jesus came out of the boat. A man heavily demon-possessed met out, uh, uh, met Jesus. I mean, this is not a fairy tale. This is the uh, reality this morning. Praise God. Matthew 8 recorded two demon-possessed men. Luke 8, 27 as well. But in our text, of Mark's gospel is a violent and a more prominent of the two demoniac of the Gerins. Remember that. Verse 2. And when he came out of the boat, immediately uh, there met him out of the tombs a man with the unclean spirit who had his dwellings among the tombs and no one could bite him. Not even in the chains because uh, he had often been bound with circles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and circles broken into pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out, cutting himself with stones. Church, this case is the lowest of the lowest, is a worst one, I have never met or heard someone who lived who lived that lifestyle until I read and study the Bible. I feel for this man. What if that was me? What if that was my son or my brother or my family or my dear friend? What if someone whom I know? The question this morning, what was the matter with him? Verse 9. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? And he answered, My name is Legion, for we are many. Now the reality, so many demons doing so many things, inflicting this man. Here is a man who can break chains and shackles, and yet deep down in his heart, crying and cutting himself with stones, Meaning, all sorts of things happened in his life. Why so many demons inflicting him in so many ways? This man is was everywhere. This man was so divided by demons, divided in personality, divided in heart, in spirit, in emotions, in his mind, in his mind. Night and day, this man was so divided by so many demons called legion. So many. It is a battleground. He was being tugged. It's like one rope on one side and other, and the other on the other side, pushed in different, uh, thousand different directions, thousand of different impulses and passions were warring against his soul. Have we seen people like that? They're so divided. Hands up, eyes twisting and rolling, leg kicking, laughing and shouting at the same time. Why? Because legion 
speaks in so many ways, doing all sorts of activities in him. This man in our text was the worst one or the worst case. In our text, the Bible says, my name is Legion. In other words, it talks about the full strength, I mean, of the Roman legion or army, numbered 6,000 of them, the name legion, to signify a well-organized army. Imagine <coughs> 6,000 strong, well-organized demons in a man. No wonder this man could break shackles and chains, and no one could tame him down because of the thousand of demons in him his personality and his world was divided this man was a victim of all the battles taking place in his soul think about this like in a turmoil that rages in his soul in different directions it's like uh, with one hand, he's gasping at the mud, and with other hand, he's reaching for the stars. This is not a theory of fairy tale. This is a real human experience. He is a great soul, greeted, uh, created by a great God, fully drowned in a great trouble of life. So divided disintegrated longing for life and this man have no answer is that you no wonder there's so many people committing suicide nowadays the rate of people committing suicide is skyrocketing every year this poor man being at war with himself, verse 5, and always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. The Bible says night and day he was constantly crying, cutting himself, himself with stones. Who would do that? Always fighting himself, always wounding himself, Always he was his own worst enemy. He was a stranger to real happiness. No divided personality can ever be happy. What a way to life or to live. Because of his divided world and personality, this man must be praying. The Bible says he constantly in tears crying. Night and day. What a life. You know, this morning you may not be in the mountains or in the tombs or cutting yourselves, but your world is divided. You're crying and longing for unified life, longing for deliverance, longing for joy, longing for peace, longing for breakthrough, longing for healing and deliverance, longing for blessing. Loneliness and rejection fills your heart and it seems there is no way out in life. Your life has taken a knock and your soul cries if there is a way out. Your world is so divided and torn apart. Now this is the same experience that Paul had and people uttered uh, countless times, uh, even coming out of Paul's lips. Uh, listen to this, uh, and I want to tell you this morning, uh, church, uh, events, uh, listen to this, uh, even the events of life uh, has the power and the ability to divide your life uh, and your heart. Just as Paul says, Oh, wretched man, I am, who shall deliver me? 
It is a cry of sheer agony, wet with tears of frustration and bitter heartache. I read a story of a man who committed suicide. The reason he gave for this rest deed was this. He said, I am tired of fighting with myself. Oh, church. People like this, they are everywhere. They are everywhere. In our text, this man lived alone, divided, wretched, and antisocial. He cannot mix around with people. You see the connection? He separated himself from his fellow man, too disagreeable, warring against himself and his friends and families. That's what happened when someone has a divided world and personality. He isolates himself from others. This man was beyond help. He was a hard, extreme case, rated incurable. Nobody had any hope for him. The Bible says nobody could tame him down. The whole world watches this man and said, you know what, there's no hope for him. But God has a different plan. Hallelujah. That is the good news. This is where Jesus found him. Don't you thank God that Jesus came in that to that mountain spike just for this man? Think about that. All this man does was to cry and cut himself. The God of the great reaches down to the lowest of the lowest, to this man, because he cares for the lowest. Those who go through the low times of life, God will come down and touch and reach them. And his name is Jesus. God is well able to do that into your life uh, this morning. If we did this for this man, what a hope I have in Jesus. Uh, God still able to save unto the uttermost. God uh, is the hope to the hopeless. Uh, what a great news. Hallelujah. I want to speak secondly about the choice. Verse 6 of our text. This demonic of Gadzerin, although he was in the lowest of life, his response <coughs> and his choice made the difference. He overcame all the feelings, the emotions. He had to overcome self-pity and doubt, unbelief, this man had to overcome the blame game. This man had to overcome, why me, God? He overcame the shame, the rejection. He overcame, uh, listen to this, the 6,000 demons in him that hold him captive for a very, very long time. See, my dear friends, decision or choice is a very powerful thing, either for life or for death. Can I tell you this morning, no 6,000 demons has no power when you made up your mind to serve God. No demons or no man can violate the decision you make in life. See, when dealing with these demon possessed people, you need to tell them even the lowest of the lowest, tell them that they need to make up their mind to hold on unto Jesus 
to love Jesus and hate those demons. They need to make up their mind. That is the message that you need to give to them. When you pray for them, tell them, hold on to Jesus. Jesus, I love you. I don't like these demons. I don't like the state of my life. I don't want this uh, life of bondage and sin and hopelessness. I want Jesus Christ and Jesus loves me and I love Jesus. Tell the legion to go. Hate them. They need to make the decision to choose Jesus, to run to him and worship. Just like what this demon, demon demoniac of God's arranged did, listen to this, he ran, he chose to run to Jesus and worship. Verse 6 of our text. There is power in the choice you make in life. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him and cried out with a loud voice. Is the you? Perfect remedy to your current circumstances. Perfect remedy to your problems. We need to make up our mind to run to Jesus. Even the darkest of the darkest. We need to run to Jesus, worship him. Decision is a powerful thing, either for life or for death. You see, there needs to be a connection. Jesus takes time to know the enemy. He said, what is your name? Legion. The Bible says 2,000 pigs were out there in the mountainside. Three demons, listen to this, three demons jumped in each pig <coughs> and get hold of the 2,000 pigs and them. And they ran towards the sea and were drowned. What a sin. What a sin. My point this morning, church, is this. That God value life more than the peaks. That God value life more than the property. One single soul available. So available before God. He does not care about the 2,000 or 10,000 pigs or the money lost. See, our God value life more than anything else. <coughs> we need to remember the news of the event. It took place. The Bible says uh, all regions uh, heard this uh, event, uh, what Jesus had done, the deliverance uh, that he did to this man. Uh, listen, God does it in no time. That's, that's the power when someone made a choice to run to Jesus and worship him. When people uh, saw this drama, 2,000 dead pigs, they were so afraid and begged Jesus to leave their region. Can I tell you this morning, the power of God make people fearful. Sin in them bring fear into their life. I like the way this demoniac of God's reign responded in verse 6. When he saw Jesus afar, he ran and worshipped him and cried out with a loud voice, O oh, beloved, the cry of the desperate heart, a desperate soul before God. <clears throat> Another problem today. We don't have that desperate heart before God. No longer desperate to see people set free from the power of the enemy. 
we are caught up with the rituals and the routine, but no longer desperate to see the need of the human soul, and that is Jesus Christ. The need to see that human personality has been divided and ruined by the enemy. And so many people, listen, are crying out there, looking for deliverance, looking for blessing and hope. Can I tell you, my dear friends, that people without Jesus, they are totally crushed within their soul. <coughs> then we want to speak about the great things. In our text in Mark 19, Jesus said to him, to this nameless demoniac of Gazarene, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. See, whenever people meet Jesus, great things happen. Let me repeat, whenever people meet Jesus, right, great things happen. God does great things upon our life. This is his great story. Do you have a great story of what Jesus done into your life? If not, you have not met Jesus. Whenever Christ has his way, whenever people surrender and run to worship Jesus, God does great things. Jesus said to this man in our text, go and tell what great things the Lord has done for you. This is his true life story of this man. We don't know how many, how long does this man live in the mountains, in the tombs. This man may have friends and families before, but somehow life changes for him. Now he lives in the tomb and mountains, messed up, broken, cutting himself with stones day and night. No peace, no blessing. He was helpless. But the moment he met Jesus, he was born again, converted. All the 6,000 demons left in no time. Jesus set him free. The peace of God rest in his heart. The joy. Verse 8, for he said to him, come out of the man, unclean spirit. This man was delivered, instantly delivered, healed, delivered from 6,000 demons. Who can do that? Who can do that? Not in religion. He said, my whole world is divided. My mind and heart and soul was divided. My life, my mind was in a mess. But Jesus delivered me. I was in my right mind. Verse 15. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one that demon possessed and had legion, sitting and clothed, in his right mind. Oh, this man experienced a life-changing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that is about, you know, salvation is supernatural. It needs to be supernatural. When you meet Jesus, the changes begins to take place. The old life passed away. Behold, all things become new. All things become new. New. In our text, uh, Jesus said that to him, Go home to your friends. No, that is the great things, the supreme things, uh, that is the priceless things Jesus did uh, for this man. He restores his life, his sense of belonging, he restores his family, his relationship back at home, and even to his friends. There's no such thing a Lone Ranger Christian. 
Jesus said to this man, he's saying to you this morning is to go and tell your friends, go home and tell your families. Listen to this, because Christianity, you should not walk alone. You need to walk with Jesus and of course, others. Not many times I'm worried when Christians live alone in the island. That is not a plan of God for your life. You were not designed to live alone. Just like this man in our text. <clears throat> he has a real test for every man and every woman ought to hold to his religion. Does it enable him to live with his fellow men? Because a real Christian will certainly be able to meet and pass this test. See, this demonic of Gadarene used to be indifferent to everyone, could not care for anybody, always alone, fighting for others, fighting others, and no one could tame him. But now God's, God tell him, uh, you know what, uh, what he needs to do. Mix with people, mix with friends, mix with families, and go to the region of De Decapolis. Listen to this. To go out and tell others the great things God has done into his life. When the demoniac of Gadarene got saved, he wanted to follow Jesus in the boat, but Jesus did not permit him. Maybe what was lacking in his life before to go and mix with people, his families and his friends. This is healthy for your soul. Before he separated himself from people, but now it's different ball game. Before, because of his divided personality, he got wild and, and have hatred towards people, away from everyone else. But uh, on his conversion, this changes, I mean, now he begins to tell everyone about what God has done in his life. Not only that, this man went and tell others the great things, not only the great things, that God had compassion on him. Now, one of the great things and the great news I ever heard, that God loves you and how compassionate he is, that God cared enough, uh, no matter what problem you face in life or how messed up you go through in life, uh, Jesus Christ loves you just like he did to this man. He loves you dearly. Remember that. No matter what you go through, there's a God in heaven who cares for you and loves you here on earth. And he wants to be involved into your life. <clears throat> John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that whoever believes in him shall not perish but will have everlasting life. Run to him today. Worship him today. And trust him today as your Lord and personal Savior. This man was so overwhelmed when he encountered Jesus. The Bible says he went away and proclaimed the good news. Proclaim salvation and the goodness of God. He began to proclaim in Decapolis all that Jesus has done for this man. And the Bible says all were marveled. My point uh, this morning in church, uh, do you have the same story? You can tell your friends, you can tell others, uh, you can go and tell other cities, uh, go to Decapolis. Uh, if you don't have that story of yours, you can have it now and tell people of the great things uh, 
happened into your life that God loves you, that God is so real, uh, that Jesus Christ is the answer uh, for your life today and tomorrow and forever. You know, this man who lived in the tomb, he becomes a missionary. She says in Mark 5, verse 19, this is more than a story. We are called to do this. Go home to your friends and tell them all the great things the Lord has done for your life. You know, so many people are not aware of this, that God truly loves them. If you only know that God loves you, all things in your life begins to change. And you will be amazed, just like in our text, that everybody will be marveled by your message. A life-changing experience through Jesus Christ. See, everyone in Decapolis, the Bible says, was marveled. This Gentile area of Galilee, uh, located at the east of Jordan River, and when they heard and saw the great things God does to this man, the Bible says they marveled. Can I tell you this morning, as I conclude, listen to this, God has great plans, great future, great things, and great destiny for your life. COVID is just a part of the great plan that God has for your life. And He loves you deeply in Jesus Christ. See, a man is not great because he comes from other nations. A man is great because he serves the living God. Hallelujah. I want to challenge you this morning. Maybe you are hearing and joining with us today. It's open. You don't have to live in sin. God can change the hopelessness around. Your hopelessness. God can change things around. If you run to Him and worship Him. Maybe you are in the dark. Things are not working well for you. Oh, I want to tell you, my dear friends. 25 years I've been serving God. 24 years, one thing I will let you know that God is real, that God loves you. If you run to Him and worship Him, things will change for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I have every head bowed, eyes closed? We thank God for joining with us for viewing. Praise God, maybe this morning you're not saved, you're not right with God. Pastor, I'm a sinner, I'm a backslider, and today I want Jesus Christ into my heart. Hallelujah. I want to be born again. I know if I die tonight or die today, I won't make it heaven my home. The good news, you can be saved. The good news, you can be forgiven. The good news, that Jesus has a great plan. You can make heaven your home. The good news, you can have a change to life in Jesus Christ. If you believe, if you say, Pastor, I don't want to repent of my sin. I want Jesus in my heart. If that is you today, you can pray with me this prayer, inviting Jesus into your heart. Repeat with me, Lord Jesus, <coughs> thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I repent for my sin. I believe you died on the cross and rose again. Jesus, I repent. Come into my heart. Save me. Wash my sins. Lord, from today onwards, I give my life to you. I want to live for you for the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I want to speak to the people of God. You heard the preaching. Amen. We need to go out. So many people are so desperate. So many people are 
the wounded. The only hope is Jesus Christ. The only hope is you and I need to let them know is a God in heaven who cares for them, who can deliver them. You can pray for them and see what the Lord, the great things God have for his people and for their life. Amen. Let's stand on our feet. Let's take time to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Maybe you are sick. I want to tell you, run. Run to Jesus. Maybe you've tried so many places. I want to tell you, my dear friend, run to Jesus. Worship him. Even in the darkest hour, run to him. Jesus, I need you. Cry with a loud uh, cry, with a loud voice, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Amen. Publicly declare, oh Jesus, save me, heal me, deliver me. Amen. Let's spend some time in prayer. Let's wait upon God. Father, we pray. Robo Karaba Shanta. Father, I pray the reality of knowing you, God, the revelation, the insights of God. Open our hearts and mind. Deliver us, O Lord God. Empower your people by the blood, the supernatural grace of God. Help us to be truthful and faithful in serving you, O God. Lord, I'm asking you, those who are joining with us, those who are listening to this day, that they will experience God, a fresh wind, the fresh fire, the fresh faith, the fresh zeal and passion. Oh, to serve you and to love you, Jesus. Father, we love you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Again, I want to take this time to... Uh, <clears throat> thank you for joining with us. Uh, please uh, do stay tuned uh, for future messages. Uh, we are the Nakasi Porter's House uh, Church uh, here in the Fiji Islands. Uh, thank you for taking your time and may God bless you today.